Martial Art History Podcast. Hosted by Antonio Aloya. Presented by Martial Arts of Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. You bring up your 30 years of competition history. You competed in many state and national tournaments of different styles. What aspect of competition attracted you to that portion of the martial arts? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I competed in all three divisions, weapons, kata, and, and kumite, and I loved all three. Um, and I would compete and do well in, in kata and weapons as well. And I won a lot of titles on that as well. Um, uh, I just enjoyed the, the beauty of kata and learning new katas, and, and, and then when they started to get into the creative aspects of it, um, I, you know, I studied Kung Fu for a while, and, and that really helped. Um, the judges back then, they didn't judge Kempo katas. They, they just didn't know what to look for. Nowadays, they have a, they have a separate division called Kempo Division, where you can enter and do your traditional Kempo forms. But in regular open forms, um, I studied uh, several styles of Kung Fu, um, Sun Moon Fist System Kung Fu, Shaolin Kung Fu. And I started using their katas, the Tiger, the Crane, and, 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 and the Leopard Set, and, and, and the Bunk Set, and some other ones, and it, I did really well. And uh, in fact, the first tournament I won, I, I got disqualified in sparring. I took first place at Kata, and I was a green belt. And I was like, wow, you know, and I was like my first tournament. I thought maybe I should stay with Kata a little bit, and I did. And to this day, I really enjoy the Katas. Are there aspects of training that can only be obtained in competition? Do you recommend participating in competitions to your student? Yeah, we, we have a competition. We, co- we, we encourage our students. We have a team, an American team, that goes locally. We have a national team that goes nationally. We even have an international team that goes international. It competes in places like Italy and Germany and, and England and, and, and some of the bigger tournaments. Um, uh, me personally, I, I, I find that the training and competition brings you to another level of excellence. Do you think that there is something you want your students to achieve in competition, as well as view it in a certain light? If, if they want, I have it described, the best way I can describe it is like, it's a scale. You know, what do you want to do? You want to win local tournaments? Well, this is how much you got to put a work in to balance that out. You want to go on a national level? Well, you need to really put a lot more on that other side of the scale. A lot more training, a lot more knowledge, a lot more work done. So, um, and it also teaches two things, depending on the individual. See, it work both ways. Uh, one is a person loses and they're like, God, that guy didn't beat me, I beat him, or your judges are blind, or they don't know what they're looking at on my kata, I get a superior kata, and, and they work away with a negative uh, attitude. And, and there's the ones, uh, like when I lost, uh, to be honest with you, I, I said, okay, well, the other guy beat me. Why? What do I need to do to beat him? So it made my game plan my technique, my kata, my moves, uh, especially in kata and weapons, take it up another level. You know, I'd say, okay, I've got to do this to be, to be that level. Um, so it's, it's up to the individual. You know, it's like it's like school. You know, some people, you know, get through school and some want to go to the college and some want to go, you know, they put more work in and they want to go to the next level and, you know, become lawyers or doctors and go to specialty schools. It's how much work, it's what your desire is. Uh, it does give a student as a white belt or orange belt or yellow belt uh, at our, on our, on our um, local tour that we do, we do at AmeriKick tournaments four times a year. And it's only up to AmeriKick students. And in those tournaments, they're broken down. You'll have, you'll have like a, an orange belt division or a yellow belt division or a white belt division or a purple belt division. So it's very fair. Uh, and every competitor, if they lose, they still get an achievers medal. But uh, if they get aside from these little tournaments, the little baby steps. Hey, I think I want to go into the to the local tournaments. And then the competition's a little more difficult, you know. And you have different judges, and they judge on different formats. So again, it's 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 the desire of the student and what they want to get out of it. But it's a good it's a good way to to, to get a student involved. And, and see for themselves what their skill level is and what they want to do to accomplish.
Your Amerikik franchise has 23 locations, mainly centered around the northeast region of America. How did the idea of franchising your dojo and system of Kempo? Was there something not present in either the immediate martial arts or Kempo community that you sought to offer? Well, many of my black belts, you know, they got there and they went to... At one time I had three schools. And, you know, I'm, I'm training managers and, and salesmen and I'm teaching and my wife just had a baby girl and it was like, oh, you know. So we saw school and then somebody else gave us a school. And then, then we had back to three. And then I sold that school to one of my instructors. And then we went, somebody else was going out of business and we got their school. So, uh, we got back to three. And then I sold those two and we just wanted to cut it down to, to one school. But my wife opened up another one and uh, no sold that. Um, but in the process of doing that, we gave our instructors an opportunity to whether it's they were in schools, and after a while, other other characters coming up through the ranks, they wanted to open up a school too. Um, so we did more of a not a franchise thing, but a marketing a marketing uh, associate thing. So uh, yeah, that's how we keep going to franchise. That's what we did. So it happened out of circumstance. It was not something that you pre-planned. It happened organically. Yeah, one, one thing rolled into another, and, and we. Um, the schools that we sold, you know, the instructors were happy. They were doing what they loved, and you know, a couple of them had came up with black belts, and they wanted to move on and get their own schools. So we just we just helped them out. So we have a, a whole program now to help uh, from A to Z, getting a location, building the lease, the landlords, build out, you name it. You know, get the dealing with the uh, the walls, you know, the the. the building inspectors and uh, financial systems and uh, Facebook and a whole nine yards. So, uh, got a pretty strong group. They got a good group. To back up for a bit, throughout your 50 years of training, you had the opportunity to train in several different martial arts systems, including Krav Maga, Kung Fu, Ninjutsu, Judo, Arnis, and Bando. What drew you to pursue these arts, and do you feel they have greatly influenced your individual Kempo karate style? If so, how? I, I got my black belt in modern East up there, Remy Crazy, before he died. <laughs> and I got promoted up to a seventh level degree black belt in his system. The Arnis is a wonderful system and it fits right into a Kempo. Uh, it really complements it very well. I also got a black belt in Taekwondo and uh, got involved in the Hoga sparring, which is different rules and different format. And um, have nine state championships in kata, uh, creative kata and sparring. I went on the nationals and took a bronze in sparring. Uh, that helped uh, That helped me develop my kicks, you know, really focus on my leg work. Uh, got a black belt in Shotokan. I, I did that because I loved the perfection of the Kata's. Um, I just, they're so strong and so sharp and, and several times, uh, you know, uh, you the competition, you look who the judges are and so, oh, gosh, I get up with these judges, so get out of my white uniform, get on my, get my white uniform on and, uh, go out there and bear Shotokan on and do well. So, uh, the, the Shotokan I love for the purity of the art. With that purity of the art in Shotokan in mind, how did that help you better understand or better perform Kempo Karate? Were there any parallels between the training or philosophies? In Shredekan and Kendo, they're, they're, they're very similar. I think the, the best way to describe it is the Japanese word like Shibuni. Shibuni means effortless perfection. Um, just doing something without thinking or without reflecting. And, and, and the discipline and, and internal focus of character, uh, I think are, are are one of the main things that I learned from Shotokan. I also had a terrific instructor at Shotokan who taught that but they never settle for for good. Settle for perfection. And uh, it, it brought my level of uh, martial arts up to another, to another level. And the basics are, are phenomenal. But, you know, knowing the basics of Shotokan, you get that down, you're going to be really strong in any system. Read the entire interview and much more 
at martialarthistory.com. Check out Aikido Comes to America, a brief history of the art's American pioneers and their journey to the present. Available on Tambuli Media.